Hey everybody, welcome to my very basic guide. This episode we're going to be brewing our strongest potion with the Alchemist subclass, an artificer specialist that is focused on supporting your team with the power of bubbly drinks. If you ever wanted to help out your fellow travelers on the long road that is being an adventurer, then providing the beverages on the journey will surely net you some brownie points with the team. Alchemists from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is all about making craft drinks that have beneficial side effects, ranging from basic healing to causing somebody's body to transform, in a purely positive way of course. The Alchemist is a pretty flavorful subclass whose strengths are somewhat outshined by its more martially focused peers, but I felt that supporting adventurers preparing to go into battle with your strongest potions is a pretty cool concept and wanted to make this video to hopefully shed some light on the venerable tradition of cracking open a cold one with the boys. Starting off at level 3, you get an extremely important subclass feature in the form of tool proficiency for your alchemist supplies. And when I say important, I mean important for your character's identity as an alchemist, not because the subclass feature is mind-blowing, because it's not. It's about what you'd expect from the alchemist subclass. Although, if you already build a player character with proficiency with alchemist supplies, then you can also choose another artisan tool to be proficient in. Alchemist Supplies is one of the more versatile artisan tools to get proficiency in, since potions are super important to the daily dietary habits of the average adventurer, and being able to save some money when crafting your own acid flask, antitoxin, or alchemist fire can be a big boon on the financial side of being an adventurer. Also, Xanathar's Guide to Everything also gives some additional examples of ways you can use your alchemist supplies, such as identifying a poison and neutralizing acid. Obviously, these examples are up to the discretion of your dungeon master, but having that option to ask is a pretty neat addition to have in your back pocket. Moving on to the alchemist specific spells that they get for free and do not need to prepare, we start off at 3rd level with Healing Word and Ray of Sickness. Healing Word is a fantastic bonus action spell that is kind of compulsory for any serious encounters as it allows the alchemist to still cast a cantrip with their main action while also keeping their distance from the front lines. Ray of Sickness on the other hand is probably not going to see a lot of usage, but it does make sense that you have an alchemy spell that can cause illness in the enemies that you splash. Moving on to level 5, alchemists receive Flaming Sphere and Melf's Acid Arrow. Flaming Sphere is an okay second level damage spell, but requires the enemies to be really bunched up or in a cramped dungeon in order to make use of its potential area of effect. However, Flaming Sphere does have interesting utility as a concentration spell that sets flammable stuff that isn't being worn or carried on fire, maybe allowing for creative plays over multiple turns. Melf's Acid Arrow is a decent single target damage spell with not much else to talk about. Arriving at the 9th level, you receive Gaseous Form and Mass Healing Word. Ever wanted to figure out how being a cloud feels like? Well now your alchemy has the power to turn yourself into a misty creature that can slip and slide into the most remote nooks and crannies. This is a pretty useful utility spell to be picking up for free and has a lot of applications during social encounters when you want to spy or if your party needs to move forward as a scout that can get itself out of sticky situations. Mass Healing Word is basically a third level multi-target version of the normal healing word, better for when your entire party is taking hits both being very excellent support spells to have prepared at all times, and both only cost your bonus action. Reaching level 13, you get Blight and Death Ward. Blight is a decent single target burst spell with not so good spell save and constitution, but it's still a decent necrotic damage for a 4th level spell. Alchemists also receive Death Ward at level 13, which is a pretty nice buff generally reserved for the faithful classes like Paladins and Clerics. It is a life-saving spell that lasts for 8 hours and does not cost concentration, which is why it's so good. Death Ward allows an ally to drop down to 1 hit point instead when they would otherwise drop to 0 from taking damage. Death Ward, true to its name, also negates the effect of instant death spells such as Power Word Kill. The Death Ward spell ends after protecting the receiver of the buff. So yeah, a pretty great addition to your toolkit. Finally, getting to level 17, you receive the final two alchemist spells that you get for free, which are Cloud Kill and Raise Dead. Cloud Kill is not the best, but not the worst damage dealing concentration spell. Its most interesting aspect is that it can potentially go around and can seep through hard to reach areas that would otherwise block direct line of sight. Its other interesting but potentially less beneficial mechanic is that it continually goes away from the caster, sweeping through its directory without much control. So overall, Cloud Kill is probably only going to be useful sometimes and won't see much time in the sun, especially for a half caster like the Alchemist. Raise Dead is for alchemists that have figured out the secret to transmuting diamonds, but on its more serious note, this 5th level spell is a fairly decent option to keep your party mates alive, and is especially useful if your party lacks a dedicated reviver such as a cleric. Alright, after all of those spells, it's time to go back to the fundamentals of what being an alchemist is all about. Brewing Potions Alongside your tool proficiency and free alchemy spells, you get the subclass feature Experimental Elixir, also at level 3. This is the signature feature of the Alchemist subclass, allowing you to randomly roll a d6 on a table that tells you what effect the elixir will have. 
The experimental elixir mechanic is designed to be unreliable, as it emulates an alchemist's constant tinkering and iterative process of crafting stronger and stronger potions. You can also easily swap out the default table provided by Tasha's Cauldron with one that your DM agrees would fit your character theme better, if you so desire. You receive one free elixir after a long rest by magically filling a flask with your bare hands. The numbers of free elixirs increases as you level up as an alchemist, increasing to two elixirs at level 6 and three of free elixirs at level 15. You can also expend any spell slot that you have to get extra elixirs, which is pretty cool if you really want to play into being the Kool-Aid man of potions, showering your friends with random effects. Although, it is important to note that you probably only want to dissolve your first level spell slots, since a higher level spell slot does not give you any additional benefits. You will always get one elixir per spell slot. The experimental elixir table from Tasha's Cauldron has six effects of varying usefulness. If you roll a 1, you get a Healing Elixir, which is slightly better than the standard Potion of Healing, restoring 2d4 plus the Alchemist's Intelligence modifier, which on average is roughly equivalent to Cure Wounds, except it's a potion, allowing you to give it to someone else to hold on to, or else having them use their own action to heal themselves, or administer it to someone else that needs it more. If you roll a 2, you get a Swiftness Elixir, which is a plus 10 to your walking speed for 1 hour. This experimental elixir is probably not going to be that useful in most situations, unless you have a specific ally that can make the most out of enhanced mobility, but the hour long duration is fairly nice. If you roll a 3, you get a Resilience Elixir, which is a flat plus 1 bonus to the Drinker's Armor class. I think this is a pretty solid elixir, stacking armor bonuses without requiring concentration is pretty handy, although the bonus only lasts for 10 minutes, so it's important to pop it right before a big battle. If you roll a 4, you get a Boldness Elixir, which provides a 1d4 bonus to every single attack roll and saving throw that the drinker makes for the next 60 seconds, which is 10 rounds in D&D combat terms. You can compare this elixir to the Blessed Spell, except without the concentration, but it only buffs one guy. Even still, I think the Boldness Elixir is extremely potent, and is useful in many scenarios, even outside of combat. If you roll a 5, you get a Flight Elixir, which grants the user a flying speed of 10 feet for 10 minutes. A flying speed of only 10 feet means that this is more useful in solving problems outside of combat or for scouting areas out. Don't get me wrong though, flying is very strong, and can be a very dynamic answer to a lot of different types of encounters, especially when it doesn't require concentration to maintain, and is essentially a first level version of the fly spell. If you roll a 6, you get a Transformation Elixir, which applies the Alter Self spell for only 10 minutes, and the one who drinks the elixir gets to choose a transformation. Alter Self is not bad, it's a second level spell that is especially useful in espionage missions or if you need to grow some gills to breathe underwater, but the 10 minute limitation is kind of backbreaking in terms of its versatility and makes the transformation elixir a pretty niche option. Overall, I would say that the flight elixir is probably tied with the boldness elixir in terms of general usefulness compared to the rest of the experimental elixir table, but all of the outcomes do have their bright moments where they can situationally outperform the other. The Alchemist's Experimental Elixir does increase in power as you level up, and the game of chance is offset by the fact that you can tactically choose when you want to expend your spell slots to gain more elixirs. It becomes a gambling kind of feature that allows you to sacrifice the arcane spells that you know the outcomes of with random liquefied spell effects in bottle form. However, as this video will go over, your Experimental Elixirs do become increasingly powerful as you gain levels as an Alchemist, and your Elixirs gain a lot of bonuses that outshine many first level spells that it is directly competing with. Alright, now moving on from 3rd level, the next Alchemist subclass feature arrives at level 5, and it makes you an Alchemical Savant. This feature allows you to add your Intelligence modifier as an additional bonus to a healing roll or a damage roll that has the Acid, Fire, Necrotic, or Poison typing with spells that you cast with your Alchemist supplies. Alchemical Savant buffs both your damage output and healing by a fairly considerable margin, especially if you consider spells that can hit more than one target. Healing spells like Healing Word and Mass Healing Word already benefit from a high spellcasting ability score modifier, so doubling up makes your healing a lot more consistent and less reliant on good rolls to be effective. Alchemist cantrips like Firebolt and Acid Splash also get a pretty significant bump in their innate usefulness allowing you to be a more formidable backline spellslinger. Coming in at level 9, your alchemical studies have led you to start mixing in some restorative reagents in all of your experimental elixirs regardless of dice roll. The Restorative Reagents feature also gives the Alchemist free access to Lesser Restoration a number of times equal to their Intelligence modifier and regaining your uses on a long rest. Lesser Restoration does not need to be prepared and does not cost any spell slots as long as you have your Alchemist supplies as the spellcasting focus. This is pretty important since Artificers being half casters means a limited spell progression table, so essentially getting free spells cast per day is a pretty big deal and a good feature to have. Your experimental elixirs also get a pretty neat buff in the form of 2d6 plus intelligence modifier in temporary hit points for anyone who dares to drink it. This is also a pretty good buff as this allows for all of your elixir variants to have some more consistency in what it can provide for the team at any given day. The restorative reagents feature is also unclear on how long the temporary hit points last for, so it is a good idea to ask your dungeon master for the duration. 
Remember that at level 6, alchemists get two free experimental elixirs after a long rest. Having at least two teammates get a bunch of temporary hit points every day is pretty valuable. Finally, achieving the pinnacle of your strength as an alchemist, you receive the feature Chemical Mastery at level 15. The toxic fumes and other chemicals that you have ingested over the course of trying to craft the strongest of potions have led you to become inured into some of the harsher side effects of being a chemist with a medieval understanding of science. Alchemists gain resistance to acid and poison damage, as well as full immunity to the poisoned condition. These passive upgrades are sure to come in handy as you continue your experiments by slamming down concoctions on a whim without worrying about potential side effects. Another aspect of gaining chemical mastery is your improved ability to cast 6 level spells without any spell slots, without having them prepared, and without the material component costs. You just need the alchemist supplies as your spellcasting focus. 15th level alchemists also get access to greater restoration and heal. Chemical mastery allows you to cast each spell once until you recharge your uses on a long rest. Being able to cast greater restoration to get rid of some curse or ability score debuff without needing some diamond dust in your pockets is a pretty great boon. Similarly, the 6th level heal spell being a flat 70 hit point restoration is also pretty incredible to essentially get for free once per day. Also, it's important to note that you get 3 free experimental elixirs at level 15, allowing you to save some more spell slots. In conclusion, the alchemist gets access to some pretty nifty supportive buffs and heals, allowing the subclass archetype to fit into multiple different types of parties that requires a caster that is proficient in both blasting and buffing and healing. The alchemist is not only able to theoretically brew potions as part of its spellcasting, but also as part of its proficiency in alchemist supplies. You can easily provide the means to float your party's financial coffer for a long time to come, efficiently cutting down costs for your adventuring provisions when it comes to brewing magic liquids. Your strongest of potions can in fact be ingested by your friends if you so desire, but can also be deadly to dragons and beasts alike, which makes for a pretty versatile rascal that doesn't have to respect knights. And that about does it for this very basic guide to the alchemist specialist subclass of the Artificer as presented in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Thanks everybody for the continued support on all these videos, it's been a really fun and interesting journey. I hope you guys feel the same. And as always, I hope that anyone who watches my stuff enjoys what I create as much as I enjoy creating in the first place. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye for now.